Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday. In this video, we will learn how to mesh ZR effects. This is part two of a three part series on ZR effects. And if you haven't seen the first video on how to import the ZR effect geometry, you can find the link to it in the description. So today we will start directly in the mesh context, having imported the channel curves, blade geometry and ZR effect curves. We can see that the first mesh setup has been created from the geometry context. And if I click on row one, I can check that the periodicity is correct. It is grayed out because it needs to be set up in the geometry context. And I can click on apply wizard to selected row to have a first mesh uh, for this, for this row. Now clicking on ZR effect on the tree, I can expand uh, expand it to find a list of all the ZR effects. In this case, I have only one ZR effect number one. And if I click on it, I see all the options to mesh the ZR effect. So the first one is the first cell size that we want to impose on the wall. The second option is the optimization steps, which uh, we will need to change once we are at the optimized step uh, of the meshing. And then we need to go from top to bottom. So the first uh, first step is the automatic blocking. I'm going to click on it. And what it will do is set up the mesh blocks in the ZR effect. So it's not quite a first mesh yet, but you can already see uh, what the, the, the topology of the mesh will look like. Add matching Z constant line. Oh, we will talk about it in a minute. It is to make sure that the ZR effect is matching with the main channel. And default mesh is the next step in the meshing process. And what it will do is apply that first cell size we have defined above on all the solid walls of the ZR effect. So there's no optimization uh, done yet. So that's why the mesh looks a little rough. But if I zoom in, you can see the viscous layers on the solid walls. The next step is optimizing uh, the mesh. And so now we need to add some optimization steps. So for example, we can add a hundred steps and click on optimize. And you will see now that the mesh is a lot smoother. So we can go ahead and generate a first 3D mesh for this blade row and the zero effect. Okay, so now looking at the 3D view, I'm gonna double click on the view to maximize it. You can see that we do have a mesh for both the blade channel and the ZR effect. And you can also see that they are not aligned in circumferential direction, which is not a problem because it's, it's periodic anyway. Um, but it also indicates that we do not have a matching connection between the ZR effect and the blade uh, channel. Now looking at the behavior of the mesh at the router stator, you can see that in this case, we do have a matching connection uh, at the router stator. And this can be changed by going back to the ZR Techno Effect 3D properties. At the very end of it, the last couple options determine the behavior of the mesh at the router stator uh, connection. So for example, if we wanted a periodic FNMB at that router stator connection, I would activate the first option and regenerate the mesh. There we go. And now we can see that not only we have a circumferential discontinuity at that connection, but also if I zoom in, uh, it almost looks like it's matching, but it's not. If I zoom in, you can see discontinuities in the grid lines on both sides of the router stator interface. So all this is determined from the 3D um, properties here, whether you have a matching or an FNMB connection at the router stator. Now, how could we make the ZR effect matching with the blade channel? So first of all, what I will do from the meridional view, I'm going to 
delete the two Z constant lines that were created by the row wizard. So I'm going to select them both, right click and delete so that I don't have any more Z constant line. And now if I go back to my ZR Techno effect and to the Meridional tab, I can click on add matching Z constant lines. And so what it will do is add a Z constant line at every block vertex coming from the ZR effect to impose a matching connection between the ZR effect and the main channel. So you can move these lines around by clicking on any of the control points, which are the little red dots. If you select the ones at the end of the Z constant line, it will reset the shape of that line to a linear shape. And then you can take any of the other red control points and move them one by one. You want to make sure that you have enough space in between two uh, consecutive lines. For example, here I may want to add a little more space in between the two lines. And you also want to make sure that they don't cross each other's. You can change the number of streamwise points by clicking on one of these lines. Um, so if the line is located upstream of the blade, this will change the number of axial or number of streamwise points upstream of that line. And if it is downstream of the blade, like it is here, it will um, impose the number of points downstream of that line between that line and the neighboring one. And what you don't want to do is move the red control points that um, connect the ZR effect with the main channel, because if you do that, then your connection, your matching connection will be lost. You can also use the detection tools in the ZR techno effect properties to make sure that you still have a matching connection or, or check it where you have FNMB connection between the ZR effect and the main channel. So by clicking on this little light symbol, it will show me in red and yellow uh, the matching connections that I have. So here, everything is marked as matching. And if you had FNMBs, you would have an additional detection tool for FNMB connections. So I can generate one last time the mesh and we will double check that it is matching with the main channel. And so now if I double click on the 3D view again to maximize it, we can see that we do have, first of all, uh, the influence of the Z constant line. You can see the, the clustering from hub to shroud. And if I zoom in on the connection, you will see that I do indeed have a matching connection between the ZR effect and the main channel. And if I look at what is happening at the router stator interface, so in this case, we are still imposing an FNMB at the router stator connection, and that is uh, what we see here. Now, if I wanted to change that, again, I can go back to the ZR Techno Effect uh, 3D tab, and uh, I can use those last options to determine whether I want a matching or an FNMB connection. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a great Tuesday.